Hello, welcome to another video. Today we're looking at World Turtles, which is a brand new in-development colony builder where you control a band of meeps on top of a World Turtle, which is a creature you may be familiar with from some of the uh, ancient mythology world origin myths out there. But uh, basically, uh, the developer reached out to me and said, hey, I like your videos on Ostrov, and I thought you might want to check out my game. So, give it a shot. It's uh, demos free on Steam. Uh, you can go check it out right now. There's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, I've played a little bit of the tutorial to try and familiarize myself a little bit, but we're going to go through it again together, and we're going to see what this game's all about and do a little bit of free play at the end of today's video. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Start this tutorial and campaign. Alright, so it's going to dump us right into the uh, tutorial, a little bit of expository stuff talking about the lore behind the game. It's talking about how different uh, tribes and stuff have all sorts of challenges and stuff to overcome living on the back of this world turtle. Talk about famine and all that good stuff. You can see it's a, a hex-based game, kind of similar to how civilization and games like that handle map design and movement. So now we're going to learn a little bit more about... Well, good job. <laughs> I love the voice acting. This is funny. So I guess now we're going on an expedition here, and we're going to follow this guy here. Expedition set up a temporary camp for the first time since leaving the valley with an aim of surveying the area and restocking on fresh berries for the next part of the journey when they heard unexpected sounds from behind a nearby hill. Well, what could that be? Six meeps arrive with carts loaded with construction materials, tools, and food supplies. They tell the expedition about their knowledge of the world turtle, their fear that it may be starving, and that the raised plot of land nearby was chosen by the Council of Meeps as a location for an ambitious catapult. They hope they would be able to use to feed the turtle huge lumps of compacted food. So, that's an interesting goal to start the game with. So I guess, based on what it's telling us here, we're going to be gathering resources and clearing land to uh, pick a spot to... Uh, if you say so. Oh, okay. Right, oh, okay. That's what that's what that sound is. It's right, dropping these different things in here. All right. So we're apparently going to assist by clearing out the trees and the stone from this area up here, and then we're going to uh, process things and get the uh, get this site cleared so they can start building this catapult to feed the uh, turtles, or this turtle at least. Okay, let's see what else we got here. We're going to assist the wrong ones in constructing farms and planting a variety of crop types to alleviate their concerns in the short term. Okay, so this seems to be pretty standard uh, city builder, colony builder fare. Just a uh, goal progression a little bit at a time. So let's see, we've got this right here. We have uh, terrain, objective, clear resources, 137 different things here to take care of. Mostly rocks and trees, I think is the only thing for right now. We have these areas right here are see, stonemason's cabin and a woodcutter's cabin. So based on what I do know about the game, I know that these buildings have kind of an area of effect that you place them down and then the meeps will go around and kind of uh, harvest things from these surrounding areas. So let's go ahead and advance the next message, see what they want. Council of Meeps Expedition will construct two woodcutter's cabins and a stonemason's cabin. You should order another of each in suitable locations close to the area to be cleared. So we're going to click on the construction icon here in the corner and get right down to it. So I like the menu system. I know we haven't gotten into it yet, but I did play a little bit before recording this video. And it's got this like hex based, I guess technically this is seven because it has one in the middle. It's like this hex based construction menu thing where you just click and it keeps expanding. So we've got settling, which we're not going to be able to do in the tutorial, I don't think. We'll play with that later in the free play. But we, right now we have gathering, so we click this, and then it expands. I just, I love the way that it does this. It's just, you click here, and then it centers that as the new, uh, the new middle of the thing. I just think that's fantastic. So we need to build a woodcutter's cabin and a stone mason's cabin. Okay, so woodcutter's cabin. Uh, we're trying to clear this off, so it probably should be around here. So I did also look this up. And we've got these different colors here is talking about how the uh, the game is telling you 
this specific area is for building on. So mostly green is good because that means there's going to be less preparation work. Red means it's basically impossible to build on. Yellow means they can uh, flatten it a little bit. It just takes a little bit more time. So what we're going to go ahead and do is find a spot here that might be good. Oh, it'll also tell you that you can actually put it there. So let's put this here. Have a license, for <laughs> license for what? All right, so we also have to put down a stonemason's cabin. You might notice it's like continuously rotating. That's the game automatically deciding the best orientation for the building. Of course, we can't build this here because it's going to be in the way. But I think one of these areas over here, I've got to be able to build this, right? Theoretically. And if I try to click somewhere, it's not going to want me to build. Get the ant. I love that. So it says more even terrain without special features in the way. So it's because I put the woodcutter's cabin here, I might have actually boxed myself in a little bit. I saw somewhere here I could probably build. No. I wonder if this is going to be too far away. Okay, I see these stones up here have this green, the green outline on the hex. I think that's good. Go ahead and put that there. Was that a Pink Floyd reference? That's incredible. <laughs> Another rock on the floor, I think is what he said. A+. plus. Alright, so while we're waiting for them to construct, we can speed up the game by pressing plus. So we go up to four times speed. Watch them build this little cabin here. It's like kind of like an ostrich, how they do the individual like beams and stonework and stuff. It's fun to watch incremental building construction. So that one's all done, and I think now they're going to come up here to this area and start building our woodcutter's cabin up here. Yeah, you see how they're like leveling out the land right here? Because this is a, I believe that was a yellow tile, a yellow hex. They just have to level it out a little bit. That's a nice little bit of realism. I think Ostrov does not do that. Would be a uh, an interesting thing to integrate in that game as well. But they're just about done with this, and then I believe they're going to move on to the Stonemason's Cabin. So we'll get into this in a little bit. But we can actually, we can see right here, there's really nothing going on here, and there's a reason for that. It's going to tell us as soon as we go ahead and click Next. All right, so this is exactly what I was saying before. While placing buildings, the terrain will be highlighted according to the viability of the intended location, which is green is good, yellow is okay, and red is at no. Not happening. And like I said, it's automatically rotating for the fastest construction time, but if we wanted, we could have overrid overridden it, excuse me, by holding down control and moving the cursor around. So this is what I was referencing earlier. Now all the buildings are done, so now we actually have to tell them to focus which is what we're going to do. We're going to click on the stonemason's cabin. I, <laughs> I love these quotes here. So we're going to click here, and this is going to allow us, you see this like moving thing going all over the map? This is going to allow us to select our area of focus. And since we're trying to clear off this, let's go ahead and click right in the middle here, the stonemason's cabin. Uh, woodcutter's cabin will do the same thing. This woodcutter's, woodcutter's cabin will do that. This woodcutter's cabin will come down here. And then this stonemason's cabin, I believe we can do there. Okay. So what that is doing is that's focusing their work in this area, which is going to move the meeps in uh, over here and have them take care of all these things instead of going all over the map. If no area specified, they'll focus their efforts on as close to home, which is really not ideal in this location because we're so far away from here. So, you know how that works. So, that's all done. Let's progress. This is camera controls. I'll probably just end up using the mouse, but it's good to know there's like fine control assigned specifically to buttons instead of just, oh, we'll figure it out. And then, like I said earlier, game speed is plus to increase, minus to decrease. You can go back to normal speed by hitting zero, and spacebar is pause and unpause. So, now we have our three woodcutter's cabins and two stonemason's cabins all done. So, we'll go ahead and close that. And you can see now they have started clearing some of the resources. You can actually watch them do this in real time. 
let's rotate our camera a little bit so you can see that they're sawing and stuff. Hitting rocks, they gradually go down, felling trees. It's fun. Nice to watch. So let's go ahead and speed up a little bit. Alright, so the Meeps have started clearing out the trees and rocks from the target area. Double check each building is set to focus on the area to be cleared, and we don't need to double check because we actually did that the first time. So we'll go ahead and dismiss that, let them get a move on with this. Note how the frames of the task icons in the building panels indicate the experience being gained by the Meeps inhabiting that building. Each individual building accumulates its own experience for each of its tasks, while each frame indicates 12 steps of progress. You can also check tooltips for exact values and uh, learn about experience as it relates to future expansions of the campaign. So let's go ahead and check that out, actually. Let's click on the Stonemason's cabin. So you see this green is fully around here. I think in a minute we're going to have another task unlocked. Sounds about right. See over here, we're not all the way back around because this is a newer building. Oh, okay, here it is. Stonemasons have gained enough experience to unlock their next task. So now we see we have shard heaps and harvesting rocks available. And these ratios here, this is going to explain this in a little bit. But, okay, so now we actually get to see gathering stone from rock leaves behind shard heaps. They also need to be cleared out. Shards are smaller, extra hard, or sharp pieces of rock that can be used to create basic tools. Gathering shards from the shard heaps is the stonemason's second task type. Task priorities need to be balanced to achieve specific objectives at different times. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go back into the stonemason's cabin, which it has dumped us back into after that little cinematic. And we're going to increase the priority for the clear shard which we would do by mousing over and using our scroll wheel. So we can either take it down to zero or all the way up to 100, and it just automatically balances with the other side. So let's do 50-50 here. And then we're going to click on the new task icon to start setting the focus area. So shard heaps, just put this right here, and that should clear those. Okay, and then we'll come down here to this other one and do the exact same thing here. So I appreciate that the uh, little uh, tooltip icon thing here stays at the location of the building instead of just flying all over the map. That's nice. I mean, it kind of scales dynamically too, which is cool. So they're taking care of that. And meanwhile, they're making actually very good progress. We're probably a little over two-thirds of the way there, approaching three-quarters done. I think when this is done, we'll get a couple more tasks as well. We'll see exactly what happens when we get there. And this woodcutter's cabin is not quite halfway to another, uh, another skill. This one actually is. But uh, we haven't seen anything pop up quite yet. We might not get that far in the tutorial to see what happens with that, but when we go and do free play a little later. We'll be checking it out. Okay, so here we are. Farms. The raised plots have almost been cleared. It's time to construct farms for the Rungmung tribe. Expedition members remember passing some wide open land, which ostensibly is right here. And it looks like these hexes right here that are highlighted is where they want us to build the farms. So we'll go back over to our construction tab. It's going to be under gathering, probably. Yep, sure is. So we're going to hit farms. And then we'll just go ahead and place one here. Excellent choice. And we'll put another one, looks like right here. I <laughs> love that. And so uh, what we're going to be having here, I believe, are what the developer told me are called pivot hexes. We'll get into that in a little bit. But basically what you do is you choose your... Uh, crops you want to grow or choose specifically with regard to these types of buildings that use this feature is there's some sort of extension of their functionality that you can click on outside of just going to the main thing. So like I guess these are like farming fields most likely and other buildings will have stuff to do with that as well. They're almost done here. I think they just have shard heaps left. Just a few. Yep, we have four left, so this should be this next person coming up here. We'll take care of that. I don't know why they're... Well, I guess they have to do uh, 
mining rocks because there's no more rocks up here to mine. So I think this person here is going to be getting the last bit of that. Yeah, that's done. Well done. Your, your earmark for the huge catapult has been cleared. All meeps will now shift their attention to constructing farms for the Rungman tribe, while one of the original expedition members will relay the news to the tribe. Select crops to be planted once the farms have been constructed. Yep, that's exactly what this is, these pivot hex things. It's a good idea to plant a variety of different crops, and the following crop mechanics should be considered in future episodes when selecting which crops to plant. All crops provide supply capacity, allowing you to sustain more meeps, and some crops are luxury crops, providing less supply capacity but extra appeal capacity. So there's a nice trade-off there. You can have a strategy going. First harvest of every crop type yields an extra appeal capacity as long as meeps have access to that crop type. In addition, the supply capacity can be increased by tending the crop during its growth cycle, which the farmers will automatically do if they aren't kept too busy on other tasks. Crop can only provide these capabilities once harvested, and the impact applies until the next crop from that particular field is harvested. At that time, the impact is replaced by that of the newly harvested crop, so it's like a rotating bonus type thing, looks like. Crops can be swapped at any time, but the new crop will only be planted once the existing one has been harvested. Remember that a variety of crops leads to happier meeps. You can see the number of instances of each crop type currently being consumed, still growing on fields and scheduled for the next planting cycle in the crop selector information. So lots of information on farms here. Probably won't go too deep into it into the tutorial, but let's go ahead and click on one of these. So now we have a choice of three different crops. Let's actually go ahead and pause the game while we're doing this. We've got corn, we've got cabbages, and we've got vines. So looking at corn, it's like, you know, similarly, if you've watched my Oster videos, each crop uses different nutrients, and you kind of have to balance that. Looks like this is less concerned with the nutrient consumption and more concerned with the benefits you get from growing different crops. So the corn, let's see. Yep, just normal food, cabbage, normal food, but the vines give uh, plus two to the supply and plus one to the affinity stuff. So let's go ahead and put corn here. We'll do, let's just do one of each actually, cabbages and then vines just to see what that's like. I don't know if we're going to actually get any benefit of this specifically in the tutorial, but we'll go ahead and do all of it anyway. So right here we'll do some more corn. I actually don't know if we'll have more planting sites over here. It probably doesn't hurt to have corn anyway. All right, so well done. Two farms have been completed, and the Rungmung tribe will tend to them from now on. But there's one last thing the expedition of the Council of Meeps can do before heading back home. Whenever an icon with a green frame appears over a building, something requires your attention. When Meeps have gained enough experience in all their task types, they can level up. More on this in a future episode, but upgrade both farms when they have gained enough experience and then select more crops to plant on the expanded fields. Okay, so that's exactly what I thought was happening. So as this gains experience, we'll get the opportunity to upgrade and then we'll get some more fields. So I guess it probably was two, two fields to start out with and then we might get a third, looks like. So we'll just have to wait a little bit to see what happens there. So you can actually see them working the land a little bit here. You can actually see stuff get planted here, that's fun. Okay, so we need crafter farms. I'm assuming that's the upgraded farm here. While they're doing that, we can, we probably don't have to. That building can be upgraded. We don't, probably don't have to. Let's go ahead and uh, get some, uh, trees cutting going on here just so they have something to do all right so we're going to upgrade this guy right here to a crafter which makes the farm more productive increasing supply capacity and appeal capacity ah so see yeah we've got two more fields here so let's go ahead we did the corner of this last one let's do cabbages and then let's do click on the right spot here yeah vines there and then we'll do this one Upgrade again. Now we have the ability. Let's do more corn. And let's do more cabbages. So I think, I'd imagine if this upgrades a little more, we might get more fields. But 
This is just the tutorial after all. It's just introducing us to the concept of how certain things in the game work. So this one is getting upgraded next. They're actually adding onto the buildings, which is fun. So this is something I wish like Ostrov would do, where the buildings like actually evolve over time. It's a fun mechanic. Okay. And so it came to pass that the wrong ones took their first tentative steps on the terrain outside of their valley, met some other meeps, and this time at least managed to end up calling them friends. Ooh, we can have combat. Is there combat in this game? We'll find out. The expedition managed to acquire enough food for this winter, but they also acquired some troubling knowledge about the state of their world turtle. They will no doubt be called upon again to play their part, however small, in overcoming this threat. So I guess this is the end of the tutorial. Uh, we can stick around and watch them harvest the crops, or we can head back to the title screen and try out a free play game. So let's uh, let's just take a look here and see what the harvesting looks like while we're already here. And then we'll move on over to free play and we'll see what ends up happening. You can actually watch the growth statistics update in real time, which is cool. Are they harvesting here? Looks like they are. Okay. So I guess they're going to be moving around getting the different crops and stuff harvested as soon as these are done. Yeah, see, they're like picking stuff up here. Picking those cabbages up. Probably should be getting this corn pretty soon. Yeah, see, here comes somebody. There you go. Very cool. So now I think they're going to be replanting here. Yeah. Just a default to cabbages. We are probably going to end up rotating when we do free play. But yeah, that is the tutorial here. And you can see we have this other area over here that they're working on doing different things. So pretty uh, good basic introduction to the mechanics of the game. I'm excited to see what happens in free play, which we'll go to right now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump on into free play. And there's a little bit of a blip about some controls and then some lore. We're going to go ahead and read real quick. The turtle moves. It is alive for now. It wants to stay that way, but it needs help. The meeps living on the world on its back also want it to stay alive so they can do the same. It will not be easy. They will need to band together, expand their skills and knowledge, improve their efficiency, and teach their children well in order to have a fighting chance. Join them in working with the environment to improve in negative situations and affect progress without destruction. Learn about the world and push back the boundaries of physics in order to advance. The world you need to save will provide you with all the resources you require to do so, if you but use them wisely. While grand contraptions allowing interaction with the turtle and space are necessary eventually, you'll have to start small and build up a foundation from which to launch your greatest efforts. You will need to prove that you can unite the energy and will of the bands of meeps scattered across the land. It's time to get going. Okay, so here we are at the start of the free play game. Looks like we've got a Founder's Hex. And from what I understand, we have to connect everything with roads. We have a small amount of stuff going on here. So we can't build a farm quite yet. So take a look at this tooltip text. Farms require vast open areas. Do not use such areas for other buildings. You may have to expand your territory first. So yeah, we're going to have to be careful not to block ourselves out of farms. What we're going to do is settling here. We're going to do a wanderer's cabin find a spot that is going to work nicely for that so you actually see these ghost outlines here are i guess road building tiles so we'll go ahead and put that there all right let's get to it they'll go ahead and get started building that and then let's see a builder's yard let's see how far do i have to go before i get to a farm i think we have to have enough resources of stuff. I have to have... I have to have something. We'll figure it out. I think I'm improving. Let's go ahead and build a builder's yard. I think I can get away with this. Right, let's get this one up. Looks like it. Let's go ahead and uh, get this on a fast mode speed here. We 
pigs up here? I guess we'll have to send someone to take a look at that. Probably from the wanderer cabin, I have had to guess. We need a woodcutter's cabin. I know. We'll Work get there. Ah, something new we can build. All right, so let's go ahead and a cabin. ah farm. <laughs> Can I put this here? Let's get building. I can. Okay, we're gonna need a woodcutter's cabin. There's a new building available. I was see. built for this. So I want to see if I can get. More woodcutter's cabins. I know. We're getting there. I'm trying to find a decent spot for one. We need more stonemasons' cabins. We're getting there, dude. We're getting there. This takes time, my dude. How about right there? Okay, so it looks like we've got that taken care of. Let's see, improving. We need a research hub and a leisure hub. Builders have unlocked a new task. Ah, roads. That's right, where we're going, we don't need roads, but they do. Farms constructing. Okay, looks like the farm's all done, so we'll go ahead and plant our crops here. So I have to actually click on the right spot Next here. Potatoes. Okay, I have to be able to click on this. Oh, so we have people migrating into the town? Joiners? Or is that like the name of another tribe? Okay, no, they are migrating into the town. Good. Alright, now, farm people. I have to be able to build a crop here. I was able to do it in the tutorial, why can't I do it here? Do I have to actually uh, construct a road first? Oh, we'll see. Woodcutter's cabin constructing just about this done. Looks like they're gone. New building available. Leisure hub. Okay, so we definitely need to have a leisure hub and a, leisure a research hub. hub. I know. We need a research hub. We're getting there, dude. Wood, wood, wood. So that's the. Some rocks. Okay, we'll put those two here. We'll keep expanding this way. Still can't select uh, which crops I need to build. So I don't know what that's about. Oh, I was trying to click on this instead of the thing on the bottom. Start with corn and cabbages. We'll get those scheduled up here. All right, so let's see if we construct a there. Okay, so now we have research up complete is going to show us our tier overview here. So this is like the tech tree. I guess this is what is being uh, researched slowly. There's all sorts of stuff here. Points of interest, domestication, cultivation. Yeah, there's all sorts of cool stuff. Okay, wanders have gained experience, so they're going to be doing all of these different things, balancing uh, research, leisure, surveying, points of interest, and exploring the map. Interesting. Let's go ahead and build our roads for all of this. Look, what we can build now. Look out, towers. New insights have been gained. Well, I don't think we have combat yet, so I'm not worried too much about lookout towers. But it is good to have these uh, farms and stuff going here. Okay, what are they? okay, we can't research anything quite yet in the Leisure Hub. That is a good thing to have uh, unlocked, I suppose. Let's see, how are we looking over here? Okay, we haven't quite got to the point of unlocking next couple of tasks, but we can. Serving points of interest, let's see. I think there's a couple right here. So if we set that, see what we can do. Looks like this is somebody else up here. Oh, these are... They've got exclamation points. Are they angry boys? I think they're angry boys. Okay, I'm gathering more and more of our stuff here. Okay. 
Realm's industry progress is three. Three out of what? Interesting. Hmm. All right, so we should be able to... I think we've built all of that. Actually, no, hold on. Infrastructure. Lookout towers located between tribal camps and builders' yards. Hmm. So it's something like this. All right. St Stonemasons can now do shard heaps. That's fine. Farm is progressing slowly. Woodcutters have a new task. Planting trees. Okay. Well, that's cool to know we can actually plant trees. I didn't think about that. So I guess you can't just keep cutting stuff down without growing anything else, right? Usually the world doesn't work like that. Got towers done. Let's go ahead and construct a road. We have acquired new knowledge. We have acquired new knowledge. Like that. All right, so a lot of this functionality is locked behind stuff because this is a very early version of the game. But it'd be interesting to know if the lookout towers were able to do, like, I don't know, like espionage on enemies or something. That'd be kind of fun. And I assume if there's lookout towers, there's going to be some sort of combat at some point, too. Let's see. Onions could provide meeps with food. Research domestication, then let your wanderers survey this spot again. Alright, so let's take a look at our research hub. Take a look at our tech tree. Let's see, domestication. There's something new we can build. Okay, so we can select what we're doing. Domestication. We have to have an apprentice research hub. Okay, 10 farm, prepare provisions. Okay, so I think. Hmm. I don't know how we can get progress on this quite yet. Boy, this really reminds me of Civ, how this is laid out. It's kind of cool that you can see the, uh, the head and all the uh, limbs of the turtle. I guess we'll get this entire area of the map eventually as we uh, get to that point. It's cool seeing all the roads and stuff. I want to I get this, uh, these farms going here. Probably all sorts of other stuff we're going to be doing. Builders yards working. Lockout tower is working. Okay, now the farm can be upgraded. To... Oh, I have to research the... Okay. Okay, okay. So we have, we have stuff we actually have to do first. Let's get to... Oh. So where is the windmill? Construct roads. Flinches... Okay, so they, they are slowly, slowly researching stuff here. Where is the windmill? Is that here? Okay, so we can't... We have pump drill at the woodcutter's cabin. That is down here. Okay. So we just have to have experience accrued until we do individual research. That makes sense. Okay, we can't do that until we have windmills. So, looks like we'll be stuck on that for a little bit here. But we have some sort of progress bar on this. I think we'd sent someone to look at this. We told them they could at least. Okay. So, surveying points of interest. So, I guess... Uh, just have a focus on the bear for now. And we'll increase the priority of our 
area of interest. Oh. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. That would be why this is taking so long, because I haven't allocated research properly. So we can actually... We can put that way down. Okay, okay, now we're cooking. Now we're getting somewhere. We might actually be in a pretty good spot here. And yeah, now that we kind of have a better idea what we're doing here. Just gotta wait for stuff to uh, to get done, I suppose. Uh, bridges over rivers allow me just to cross them. Then the catapult, which I've been informed... New insights have been gained. New insights have been gained. Uh, I've, I've been informed by the developer that the catapult is not presently possible to build. And the current state of development should have an update sometime soon that will fix that. So we'll, uh, we'll avoid that for right now. But it's neat watching everything come together here. I wish we had a, uh, a river to build a, a bridge over. That'd be neat. But I guess... Uh, I guess there is one here. We don't really need to get over here quite yet. So don't... No, I thought we already had pigs. Okay, these guys are... These guys are doing something, I guess. So now... Gotta have some ability to do research here. Take a look at our tree. Okay, yeah, so increasing the amount of effort going into research definitely helps, which is good to see. Okay. Research complete. Okay, so we've got the stonemason research, harvesting, etc. We, we should not be uh, in points in to contribute to the realm until we have everything else unlocked. So we'll prioritize this. Okay, a crane. Very good. That's a got lathes already? Okay. Carving joints. So I guess we have to do... We don't have a pump drill quite yet. We'll get there, I suppose. Okay, now we're actually starting to get somewhere here. Just slowly increasing the uh, ability of our meeps to get stuff done. So what else are we looking at here? See, gathering, we already have all of these. These are the only two we're able to build right now, so that's looking fine. Again, those are the only ones, so let's see. Melons. Okay, so they've surveyed the pigs. This is just about done. Alright, still don't have the windmill unlocked. Because it's... Oh, 75% though. So now we're getting somewhere. I guess I probably could have put another farm in. just want to make sure I'm not blocking off anything. Should be alright. Let's get to it then. Well we will put another farm in just to make sure we can have a little bit more access to resources here. Ah something new we can build. Okay, so the crane is complete. The of knowledge is unending. However this particular pursuit is now finished. <laughs> this dialogue is awesome. That building can be upgraded. I love this. Alright. We can make this a crafter. Let's put an extra story on this one. Oh, it's gonna upgrade the entire building, huh? All right. Well, now I'm really interested. I love watching them deconstruct, reconstruct, and stuff like that. Can't see any of the actual activity happening here because of, I guess, where we have cameras set up, but we can't hear the sounds of building. Okay, we can now upgrade the farm to a crafter. Let's get upgrading. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're doing good now. Chain. Oh. 
Okay, so now we have this farm set up here. Where's my rake? Let's grow some vines and have us some more corn. Time to move the cows. Go ahead and build a road. I think we can do. I think we've already got those two done. There was some sort of point of interest over here I was supposed to mess with. Ah, let's go here. Okay. So this is upgraded. Stonemason's cabin. A farm's going. Okay, what do we do? 24 and 13. There we go. Alright, so now we have a couple more fields here. Let's go ahead and do... What do we have here? We have... Corn. We have cabbages. We're going to go ahead and rotate that to cabbages. Rotate this to corn. Make this into vines and make this into corn. Okay, now I think we're getting somewhere here. Our understanding has improved. Let's go back to our research tier here. Looks like we are making pretty good progress. Ooh, unlocks artisan farm, huh? Alright, so chain pumps, that's what we want. Some research done here. Well, two farms out, I'll get that done a little quicker. Hmm. Of course, we still can't do anything with these two, although the research hub does allow us access to the tech tree, which is nice. So we should have... Okay, yep. Artisan farms. So... No, I don't see the... I don't see the button to upgrade to an artisan farm. Quite yet. Okay. Okay, so we need to be doing more research here. Hmm. All right. Now we're kind of getting somewhere. Builder's Yard no longer needs to do any research because we're just wasting our time with that. So where did I put that? Builder's Yard. Let's get done with that. Looks good to me. I guess we're still researching domestication at the Wanderer, so... Let's go ahead, just for the sake of getting this done. Let's bump that up and then we can take it all the way down. Min-maxing is fun, kids. Okay, and we're... looks like we're studying melons, huh? All right, and I think we can, uh, should be able to upgrade this farm at some point as soon as it gets enough experience. Uh, okay, when we get to 100% here, that's when we can make artisan farm, because that's how it worked for the last one, too. Okay, that's Lewis lifting tool, huh? Research okay, lathe is done. I think that was at the... Stonemasons coming? Yeah. Got more food coming in. I know I'm I'm super impatient with stuff like this. <laughs> okay, we don't need to uh do that. these guys just bored or what? So I guess if we really felt like it, we could have a... I guess I just don't need to build houses, huh? We can upgrade that building. Oh, now the farm has a... Uh... Oh, no, we can upgrade this to an artisan farm. That's right. Oh, that'll be nice when it's finished. Woodcutter's cabin we can be upgrade upgraded. That now. To a... Oh, I have to research joints. Okay. 
Okay, we'll go ahead and... Okay, I have to have carving first. Got it. Well, woodcutter's cabin. We have uh, quite a bit of wood, so let's go ahead and uh, bump research way up. Allocate our time wisely here. Okay, so this farm is done, which means we have more crop fields. Let's just do more corn. I guess we can go ahead and re-rotate our crops, huh? Just because we can. Schedule that in advance. It's nice it lets you do that. Okay, how are we looking here? Just nothing there again. Lewis lifting tool is complete. Okay. Alright. No, that's right, I don't have joints unlocked. We're getting somewhere. By getting somewhere, I mean we have to have carving done first. Let's see. We have eight idle meeps, which means we're going to need to build more stuff for them to do. So I guess we can go ahead and do another woodcutter's cabin, huh? Pop that there. Probably should get another farm going, huh? Okay, farmers. This one can turn into a crafter. Always upgrading. And build this building. That'll be pretty quick. Theoretically. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. How's our research going? Okay, this is almost done. Just need one more unit of research, I suppose. Building complete. Okay, that's all done. Go ahead and construct a road. So it's pretty easy getting into the flow of stuff now. We just have to get a little bit more done. So carving is all done. So of course we still have to have joints to get that done. Which they should now be... I don't want planer, I want joints. Go ahead and get joints. We're upgraded to crafter and we're not going to have a... Not going to have the uh, artisan farm. Quite a while on this. Our understanding has improved. Okay, and domestication is done, which should let us get something else, right? Husbandry. Livestock produce offspring after each growth cycle. Okay. Fertilization. All right, let's go ahead and do husbandry. Stonemason. I already did these two. Yeah. We're getting somewhere. Woodcutters doing woodcutter things. Still waiting on a bunch of experience for this one, huh? Well. Let's see. What else can we be doing here? I really would like the joints to be done, so I guess we should have another... Uh, Woodcutter's cabin doing more with research. That's 37% there. 76% here. Well, that'll help just a little bit. Do we have access to other farms? Oh, livestock. Okay. Okay, we got pigs, we've got chickens, we've got sheep. Why don't we go with pigs? Ooh, and cattle, huh? Alright, well that will be something else here. I guess that's now because we have husbandry as a thing. Our knowledge and hence ability is increased. There's a new okay. building we can build. So we have joints. We can upgrade 
artisan woodcutter's cabin, huh? Turn this into a crafter. As soon as this one is done with their research, we'll go ahead and upgrade that as well. So we're, we're really starting to get somewhere, actually. But this video is going to be pretty long, so we probably won't do too much more in this first video, but I will be making more of this game. All right, so that's a pretty good basic overview of World Turtles. Of course, the game is free right now as a demo on Steam, so if you feel so inclined, go check it out. It's a lot of fun. It's a nice departure from a lot of the stereotypical things in so many of the city builder, colony builder type games. So yeah, I'd suggest go giving it a shot. Lots of stuff to play around with. We've covered a little bit in uh, this video. We will be returning to this game in a little bit, maybe a couple more days. Get another episode looking a little bit more at some of the other stuff in the game. And I think there should be an update coming pretty soon as well. Maybe enabling the whole uh, catapult thing, which is, I think, the central element of the game lore. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. But yeah, thanks again to the developer Gideon for reaching out and inviting me to come uh, take a gander at the game. Looks like a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what happens with World Turtles in the future, and we'll be we'll be sure to revisit it. But thanks for watching. Hope you had a fantastic day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.